Today we'll look at what Next.js server actions have actually accomplished, and I'll answer several other subscriber questions too. A couple of weeks ago, I asked you for questions because I wanted to do a subscriber question and answer video, and you delivered. Now I've received questions from Patreon members, newsletter subscribers, and on YouTube community posts. So many questions, in fact, that there's no way I can answer them all today or even in a few days. So if you like this type of video, make sure you let me know in the comments so I'll make more like it. I could do at least one per month. Now let's get to the questions. Patreon member Eldad writes, what are your thoughts on NVIDIA CEO's statement regarding the future redundancy of programmers? Additionally, how would you recommend maintaining relevance in the field? Great question, and this has come up once again because Devon was recently released, and yes, it can write code. Now, Jason Huang, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, apologies if not, and I've now pulled up a web page here, hopefully I'm showing it to you as well, and it says the NVIDIA CEO says don't learn coding because of AI, and if I scroll through here, you see several different headlines and videos about this as well. So you can find a lot of information about it on the web already. Now, I made a video about exactly a year ago when GitHub came out with Copilot X and everyone was once again concerned about AI. Now, it's a short 60 second video, so I could link to it, but it's my video. I don't think I'll get a copyright hit if I just play it for you. Microsoft just announced GitHub Copilot X, and I'm getting more questions from students that are concerned about having a future as a web developer or a software engineer. If you just copy and paste code from GitHub or Stack Overflow, yeah, you should be worried. But if you can translate user stories, what your stakeholders tell you they want, into actual solutions, you'll have a job for years to come. Experienced programmers will tell you that stakeholders are not good at telling you what they want. You may have heard someone say, do what I want, not what I said. And that's the struggle. If you can deliver what your stakeholders want, you're a problem solver that will always have a job, and all the new AI tools will only help you deliver what they want more efficiently. All in all, you still need to learn everything you can about code, and your end goal should be the ability to translate stakeholders' user stories into code that provides solutions for their problems. So there you go. If you're a problem solver, if you can translate and communicate the stakeholders' needs into an actual program, I think you're going to always have a job. Now, about having longevity in this field, a couple of things. One, and I say this all the time, keep learning a little something new every day. Just a little bit, keep challenging yourself, keep moving forward. This industry continually moves forward. So I hope you like to learn because that is necessary. The other thing is just work on your communication. If you can talk to users and develop these user stories into what they want, they're going to find it's not going to be that easy to do. Too many times they do say, listen to what I want, not what I said. And well, they don't literally say that, but you know what I mean. And you've probably heard that before. So you know that the challenge there, the challenge is taking what somebody says and then what they actually mean and making something from that. And I don't think AI is going to be as good at that as you are if you work on your communication. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Patreon member Philippe writes, are you also a musician? If so, what instruments do you play and how do you balance work, life, and music? For the people who are considering using Next.js but can't be tied to Vercel's servers, what are the options? Hey, thank you for asking about music. It's always been something I love. I am a weekend warrior. I play in an 80s rock band. I sing, but I also play guitar, and I play all types of guitar. So I have an acoustic guitar, many electric guitars. I can play bass guitar if needed. I also play a little bit of harmonica. But for the last few years, singing, being the lead vocal in the band, has been my main thing. Now, when it comes to hosting Next.js somewhere other than Vercel, I don't have firsthand experience because I've always used Vercel. However, 
if you look at the docs, it says Next.js can be deployed to any hosting provider that supports Docker. And my friend Francisco has some videos about Next.js and using Docker together. So you should check out Francisco's channel. Hopefully I've pulled that up on the screen right now and we're looking at it because he puts out some great content and he does have some videos about using Next.js with Docker, which according to the Next.js docs, will let you deploy it anywhere that supports Docker. Newsletter subscriber Bemdu from Nigeria writes, what did Next.js server actions actually accomplish? I was very comfortable with the former API routes. Excellent question, and there is a lot of confusion around server actions, and I need to cover more of that, so let's take a look. If we look at the Next.js docs, you can see it says server actions and mutations. They're all lumped together. It says server actions are asynchronous functions that are executed on the server. They can be used in server and client components to handle form submissions and data mutations. So form submissions and data mutations. It did not say to fetch data or to get data as in a get request. So that is something that they're not really recommending, at least for now in the docs. And that has definitely created some confusion. So you could still use an API route, of course, but consider this as well. There's a couple of things to consider about an API route. One is it's just another server component. So if you're going to fetch data or start your component out with data, whether it's coming from a database or a fetch request, you could just do that in the parent server component of your tree. So start out with a server component, just get the data there. There's no reason to add another server component, AKA route handler, API route, into the mix in that case. However, there are still some uses for API routes, again, AKA route handlers. One of those would be to download files as I had a Next.js and Excel file download tutorial just a few weeks ago. So I used a route handler for that when I requested the Excel file and it downloaded. Now, another instance would be say, you start out with some data. So you've got a table full of results from a database query, for example. Now you're looking at those results, but now you can take action on any one of the items in the table. Now there's an instance where you started out with data and you started out with that parent server component requesting that data from the database. So that is what was recommended, but now you need more data and you wanna edit it on the same page. You don't wanna click the link in the table and go to a new page. Say you wanna bring it up in a dialogue or a modal and be able to edit any one of the items from the table in that same space. Well, this is an example where you need more data and they're not recommending server actions for that. So in this case, Maybe you would use a library like React Query or use SWR, I should say SWR, the hook is called use SWR, but there you would make a request for data to a route handler. And of course, you may have been talking about using the pages in API routes, and I'm talking about the latest versions of Next.js that are using the app router. So my advice, of course, using the app router is there are a few instances when a route handler is still good to use. Now, one other thing to just point out, if you try to use a route handler all the time, say even from a parent server component and you wanted to request data from a route handler, you may run into a build error because when you build your application, when it's deployed and then built on the server, you may be building that route handler at the same time your server components are being built. But as it's being built, Next.js wants to render those on the server the first time, and as it attempts to request data to render the component, the route handler may be being constructed at that same time, and you may run into a build error. So wrapping up the discussion, what did server actions give us? They gave us a new way to do everything except really fetch data. So it would be nice to have that included as well, but for now, you have a new way, essentially running functions on the server to do your other CRUD operations, except for getting that new data. Newsletter subscriber Lance from Maryland writes, what would your tips be for someone looking to do one-on-one -on -one meetings slash coffee chats for the first time? As a mentor, what are your do's and don'ts from mentees? Lance, I appreciate the question. And if you weren't aware, now I know you are Lance, but other viewers, if you're not aware, 
I am now offering one-on-one -on -one mentorship meetings. I have very limited time available. I am still a full-time developer. I still teach part-time for a university and I make YouTube content. But if you go to topmate.io slash Dave Gray, and I'm showing that page now, you can book a mentorship time. So let's talk about Lance's question now. So what are some do's and don'ts? And really the meeting is about you. So if you schedule the meeting, if you wanna talk code, that's great. I also like to talk about music, anything I can do to help you. But if you organize your notes ahead of time, things you want to learn from me, things you wanna ask, you can even email me those questions ahead of time and I can kind of prepare a little bit for our call. We can talk about all of those things. I've talked with people that just want to talk about code because there's no one else in their lives really to talk to about code. I, I understand. My family doesn't understand coding either. So I need to talk to other developers and I really enjoy the mentorship time as well. So anything you want to ask me about, it is your time. Now, what is a don't? I don't really have any rules I set up to send you before the meeting. However, I would just say some common sense here. We don't get into personal things. I uh, remember an old country song from the 90s called Politics, Religion, and Her. Sammy Kershaw, he said those are the three things he didn't want to talk about. Pretty much not only for mentorship meetings, but for a general rule in life, if I want to keep friends, I don't talk about divisive things. And by her, he meant, of course, his ex. So he left out politics, religion, and anybody's exes. So I've answered four questions today, but I received around 170 or so when I asked for questions. So once again, let me know if you like this type of video and I'll do at least one per month and you can submit your questions anytime. Sign up for my newsletter. It's at courses.davegray.codes. And then of course, you'll get any weekly announcement that I send out. I try to send out at least one update per week, no more than that and I won't spam your inbox. I just let you know what I've been up to. So sign up there and submit your questions because you'll get that newsletter directly from my email and I'll get any reply you send to it. Hey guys, giving a quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and Eldad is a member at the senior level. Also, thank you to all of the junior members. You're all helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's got exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. So please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.